What's up guys, we are back with another Mythic Legions review, and this is easily one of, if not the biggest, Legions release of the year for a lot of folks, specifically on the Mythic side of the house. Let's, let's say that way, on the Mythic side of the Legions house, this is easily up there for things that people have just been clamoring for. And we're finally getting our video game Kickstarter backer figure. So this is the Mythic Legions War of the Aetherblade Gorgo and Attila 2 2 pack. So these are updated versions of some classic big names within Mythic Legions that at this point command absolutely stupid prices. So this is the way for folks to be able to get some super super major characters. Now I have both of the original ones so we'll get to take some you know actual comparisons but I've really been looking forward to seeing more of this two versions of figures. I want to see what they do to change things, give characters different looks, and just get them out there in a new way without just reissuing the same stuff over and over again. So a lot of cool stuff in here for sure. Now these guys do come in, you know, kind of a different style of box. We have seen two pack figures uh, relatively recently, but it's not that common in the line overall. So you got your figures there in the big window. You've got your War of the Aetherblade logo on the bottom. Some very classic Legions-y style artwork surrounds the whole box, kind of frames it. You've got uh, a bio for Mythos in particular on one spine, and then the back of the box gives us video game artwork, which of course is very unique to this, as well as bios for our two figures. So yeah, let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our War of the Aetherblade 2 packs. So we've got our Attila Leosir 2 and our Gorgo Aetherblade 2. Of course, these are figures that both appeared in the original Kickstarter, however many years ago that was at this point. So these are new interpretations on familiar characters. And, and again, of course, these are also figures that command some absurd money on the aftermarket. So this was a way to get these figures back out there but also change them up so it's not just the same old thing, and quite frankly, to make cooler versions of them. Now, as far as articulation, these guys are 1.0 figures. They are overwhelmingly familiar parts. There are some new parts throughout both of these figures, but it doesn't really change articulation. So I'm gonna run through, I'm gonna run through one of them. We don't need to do both, and we'll see what these guys can do, see how they move around, all that good stuff. So let's take let's take Attila aside. I mean, because frankly, Gorgo is the cooler figure as far as I'm concerned, and let's talk about what this guy can do. So as far as moving him around, again, 1.0 style figure. So if you're familiar with the overwhelming majority of Mythic Legions, you know what to expect here. I will, of course, mention that I do have the pauldrons on both of these figures already, and that's because they have soft goods. And when it comes to the soft goods, the pauldrons are kind of necessary. Not in the same way as usual with these two figures, but we'll talk about that. So as far as moving them around, you've got heads. Of course, they're on a ball peg. They can look up. They can look down. You do have tilt side to side, and you've got rotation. Both of them are going to be limited when it comes to actually swiveling those heads. Gorgo has the gorget. He's also got antlers. He's always had problems with the head because he has, I mean, all this craziness up here. But it's pretty much par for the course, really. You've got arms that, of course, can go out. Pauldrons are always going to get in the way, but they still go out pretty far. The pauldrons will, of course, move with the arm because they're just pegged into the back. You do have your swivel. We've got our single-jointed rotating elbows. You've got your swiveling gauntlets. You've got your swiveling wrists, and you've got your hinges. There are no new parts when it comes to the actual functionality of these figures. Like, you're not going to see enhanced range like we're going to get with some of the Necronominus Wave Knights. That's not what this wave is. We've got our, our single torso here, so he goes backwards and forwards. I mean, he goes forward pretty decently. I, I'm still pretty happy with that. You've got your tilt side to side. It's pretty much a, just a tiny shimmy. You've got rotation, of course. Legs go all the way out. You can get him to do those splits. Kick forward. Get him to do those high kicks. Backwards still. You've got your thigh swivel up there. We've got our single jointed swiveling knees. And then as usual, uh, classic boot movement down here or foot movement. You've got hinges for the ankle, pretty decent rocker. And then you've also got rotation at the top of the ankle, just where that, where that foot actually pegs in. So he's, he and Attila both are classic Mythic Legions. So they didn't change the articulation scheme. They haven't really done anything different there in terms of making them move any better. I still think they move just fine. I'm still really happy with the articulation scheme in this line. Uh, I'm not going to complain about it at this point uh, because it is still something that I'm very happy with. Uh, and we will see more range down the road when they get some of those newer knights. But I think for now, uh, if you're familiar with Legions, you really know exactly what to expect as soon as you get these guys out of the box. 
What this set of figures is truly about, though, well, at least for me, is not just the ability to get them again, it's how different they are from the originals. Because while these two are very thematically similar to their original counterparts, they are also wildly different in terms of paint detail, soft goods, and of course, new parts on both figures. And new parts that are just, to put it simply, just really cool. Like some really cool new additions that change them just enough to make them very different from their original counterparts. Now, uh, as far as just the figure itself, Gorgo is easily my favorite of the two. He's been one of my favorite Legion's figures since the get-go, and this only cements that a little bit further. I really love all the extra paint detail on this figure. He seems to have just a little bit more across the entirety of the figure to make things look a little bit more gaudy, a little bit more ostentatious, because he, I mean, he's one of the major players in the entire story. He's one of Aerithir's, you know, key uh, generals. So you've got an absolute main character right here. And, and I just, I love what they've done to change him up and make him look, I mean, arguably much, much more menacing than the first figure. Cause that first figure is just a combination of parts that we saw over and over and over again, painted in Gorgo's very specific color scheme. This time around, we get a new, uh, we get a new gorget around the, around the collar there, which looks, you know, it kind of has that antler look to it when it comes to some of those gold details. You've got these awesome new pauldrons, which just look gnarly. And all of his armor, well, as far as the new pieces go anyway, have a lot more of this inlay detail. It's not necessarily painted, but it catches the light. So there's these little, like, black striations throughout, throughout the torso, throughout the gorget, throughout the helmet, and throughout the pauldrons. And he's got his very signature color scheme, which is the black, the red, and the gold. I love these pauldrons, though. They are, they are big. They very much remind me of Aerithyrs, but not to that same level of just hugeness. And they do get in the way of the antlers. The antlers are different this time around. Uh, they are they are larger, so they're not exactly the same thing as the first one, which I'm okay with. I'm, I'm happy to get uh, some variation there. But I really like what they've done to make him look a little bit more detailed, while at the same time still being very familiar. He does have one of the new torso plates, so this is not just a new torso. It's that new torso system that we've seen since... What, Alithia, where you can pop that torso plate off and you would just have, well, a hole in his chest, but then you can swap it with other figures. I don't know that there's anything that really fits on him just yet, but certainly uh, down the road, I can see maybe another pre-existing part working, or of course, there's already customizers making new plates. And then, of course, he does have this pretty gnarly soft goods cape. It is fully wired all the way around. It drapes on him really, really nicely. I have seen some confusion about how to actually put it on, and I believe I have it correct, uh, because the Attila figure also has sort of a very obvious way to go about it, and I, I believe there's one tiny detail on this figure that sort of hints us in terms of what you're supposed to do, or maybe what, well, it's what I'm doing anyway. Uh, so basically what I've got going on here is there are two loops on the inside of this cape. One I've got wrapped around the arm, and then the other, this little tiny one right here, there are these little spikes that just sort of stick right out on the side of his of his chest on that plate. And you pop the, the little the little loop around that and you tuck him under the pauldron. So it's got it's got a cinching point at two places. It's got one that wraps around the arm, it's got a larger loop for the arm, smaller loop for that spike, and it really holds it together very, very nicely. And it looks like it's coming out of the pauldrons, which I really like that look. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy with that. But the cape is really well done. I mean, it's it's classic Four Horsemen style in terms of, well, I wouldn't say classic, modern Four Horsemen style because this is the new era of soft goods from C. Jessam. And as usual, just top-notch work. I'm really happy with it. Color looks great. Uh, it's very close to what that original color was on his flimsy little cape back in the day. And it closely matches the figure itself. But this this guy is just oozing, oozing detail. And he is topped off with a new version of my favorite helmet in the entire line. And this just, I mean, he looks even more evil now. He's got the huge antlers, which are, again, a little bit different, kind of bigger in some ways, but he's got more of that inlay detail all over the helmet. It sort of runs through what would be like the cheeks back around the scalp of on the top of the helmet. But it's that just the, the coloration with the red, with that gold, it's really striking. And I mean, this is a menacing helmet to begin with, but I think he looks even more evil. And I would be remiss if we did not do this as well, of course. So here is Gorgo 2 alongside Gorgo 1. And they're obviously very similar. Like it's quite obvious that these, these are thematically 
the same kind of character, the same figure, but he's got, you know, he got a little little pay raise, I guess, and he gets he gets a better suit of armor. So this figure, outside of the antlers, is kind of a cookie cutter design that we saw a lot in the early legions. He has a very specific color scheme, however, and it very much set him apart from a lot of the other figures. This guy is just, you know, a whole different level. I have to mention, of course, this is not an original cape. This is a custom soft goods cape that I swapped out long ago for the first Gorgo, but they're very similar. You know, in an instance where at this point you don't necessarily need the original one, especially because of the, the price he commands, this is a worthy, worthy successor to the original Gor Gorgo. I think they did a tremendous job of taking everything that I thought was really cool about this guy, which ultimately it just comes down to his parts uh, parts usage, that those combination of parts always work for me, and his color scheme. And they added just enough detail to make him different, but obviously very similar. So he's got the more, the more gaudy pauldrons. He's got a lot more detail on that torso to make him stand apart, make him look like a general. He's got more detail on that gorget, and he has more detail on that helmet, coupled with a really cool cape that, again, I think hangs on him very, very well. So this guy, I mean, he just oozes cool, and I'm, I'm very happy with what they've done here. And then we've got Attila Leos here, another major player, another faction leader, main character type of, of, of guy when it comes to legions. However, when it comes to this figure, it is a night and day improvement for me compared to the original. I think the Gorgo figure, it's a nice transition and it's a nice progression of that first figure into the new. This one just takes everything that I didn't like about the first one and fixes it. Because the first one is kind of a dingy, nasty kind of gold color, which was obviously done on purpose, but there was nothing about him that really screamed faction leader except for his head, and I was never a big fan of the paint on that first head and that first face. This guy changes all of that. So all of the colors are more bright and vibrant. The color is, you know, gold this time around. It's not that sort of dingy bronze color. It's not necessarily the same gold as everything else. Like, he's not the same gold as Magnus, for example, but it's close. But he looks much, much more regal this time around. He looks like a faction leader, and I'm really happy. I'm really happy with this guy, because I wanted to really like that first figure, and I just sort of always deferred to his brother when it came to those two figures. It was always sort of a pairing for me. But I really like what they've done here. Makes him look far more menacing, and it makes him look far more important. The gold is just super, super shiny, super lustrous. It's got nice metallic accents to it. But what I really like, and what I keep getting drawn to on this figure, is the other color accents, the red and the blue, specifically this blue. The blue that pipes the sort of filigree detail in there, I think looks terrific. And this guy is just overwhelmingly standard Legion's parts, but he looks so much more gaudy with this paint job, because he and Gorgo you know, for many ways, shared the same blueprint of their body in, in, in many respects. Not entirely, but they shared a lot of those same parts in that first wave. And, and this guy is very much sort of like a standard Mythic Legions when it comes to the overwhelming majority of his parts. He does get some new stuff, some really cool new stuff that we're going to talk about. But this, again, highlights just how much you can change these older parts with literally a new coat of paint. Uh, so I'm very happy with him. He does have some new stuff, obviously. He's got one of the newer belts, which, while I'm not sure it's something I find necessary, I think it does look good right there, and it kind of breaks him up. It also is useful for his for one of his weapons. And like we've been seeing lately, we do get one of these soft goods tabard pieces, so it's wired. You can move it in and out, move it all over. Not like All-Stars 5, where we're getting uh, the, the plastic and the, the cloth. It's just the cloth here, but that's fine. That's all I would use anyway. And then he does have this absolutely massive, massive cape. It's kind of like a like a Thor's cape, you know, in terms of how it goes over the shoulders. And this is another one that has sort of an interesting way to attach. So just like Gorgo, he's got those sort of elastic bands. They're on the end here, and they actually loop around this little, little piece on the front. So it does look like they're actually attached to the pauldrons and are coming up and over. So they kind of billow around him. Again, it's it's a fully wired cape, so all the way around, more of that crazy new C. Jessam stuff, and it looks terrific, and I'm very, very happy with it because I've been replacing Legion's capes for, for a while. Not every figure, but quite a few of them. I didn't replace it on that first Attila, but they make a night and day difference. They really change the impact of the figure when you're able to make them look dynamic just standing there. However, one of the coolest aspects of this figure is definitely going to be his new pauldrons, because these just look, I mean, regal is the word. So you've got, you know, the big lion's head with the jewel on it. You've got these sort of, I don't know what these are called, but I love the fact that they are uneven. 
They're not uniform in terms of how they're hanging. They sort of look like they're dangling off of these pauldrons, maybe sort of moving a little bit, but they look terrific. I'm really happy with that. You know, there's there's a lot of detail just all over the pauldrons where he has a lot of standard parts throughout the rest of the body. The shoulder pads and all those little accents are just dripping with detail. And that's the best way to say it. They're huge, they're gaudy, and they're just a little bit over the top as well. And that, of course, translates into the head sculpt, which is, you know, very much in line with what we got with that first figure. But it also features ways to change the, change things out because this does have a removable faceplate. Uh, so you can pop the you can pop the head off here, and you can move this piece. It's crazy to think that that's what we all look like, right? So he's got it's just the weirdest looking thing. But you've got a way to change out faceplates with some of these new systems that they're working with. So I'm really happy with that. And of course he does come with one, but you've got this crazy, crazy like lion's mane thing that he's got. And you've got all of this detail up here. He's got scars on his face. He's got some facial hair. And just in general, I think the actual face itself is more cleanly and, and just more detailed, more cleanly painted and more detailed. The other one definitely looks, it looks a little bit worse. Just the easy way to say it. It's not up to current Legion's snuff in many ways. So you get a really cool sort of, you know, grizzled look on his face. He definitely looks like he's about to throw down. And then of course, just like with our Gorgo, we're gonna bring in that first figure. And I mean, they, they're nine day difference. Like they just look so, so different now. And there's a few things that definitely stand out to me. Again, I didn't change the cape on this one cause I didn't never really cared to. So he has that, that standard old, old stuff, which, you know, I'm glad we're beyond that now. Gorgo also had that same kind of cape, but the big things that stand out you know, you've got the, the new tabard piece down here. Colors on the torso, that red is brighter, that blue is much more brighter, and then the gold is more gold. The, hel the helmet is still very much in line. It's obviously not the same thing because it can break apart, but the idea is very much the same. And then we've got our new pauldrons, because these are, of course, some very standard pauldrons. He does have a very unique color scheme in this old version, but you will not in any way convince me that the old one is even close to as good as the new one. This is this is truly a humongous upgrade, especially especially for anyone who doesn't have this this character already. You're you're instantly getting the best version possible. Now, in addition to well, general availability as well as the fact that I think these are the better versions of the character so far, one of the other big areas of improvement on these is the accessories because like I mentioned, these guys get new stuff pretty much across the board. Now, to start with, let's just go through Attila's. Uh, he does come with a few things that we don't see on Gorgo, namely the fact that we have alternate heads, because as of yet, we still don't know what this guy is, because he has a skeleton neck, and we have no idea what he's supposed to be under there. Is he a skeleton? Is he a man? Is he some crazy creature? We do not know. But Attila is, of course, you know, a man. So he gets an unhelmeted head sculpt. And I, I would almost go as so far as to say, I think this is the cooler head. I really, really like him without the whole gaudy helmet on. I mean, the, the helmet is rad. Don't get me wrong, but this looks really good. He looks like he is about to throw down. I really like the hair. I like like the shaved hair along the side, that furrowed brow. You've got, you know, a little bit of a beard going there. And just overall the paint detail on this face and this head has got to be one of the best that we've ever seen in the entire line. Now, he does have the option for face plates, though. Like I mentioned, I showed you that you could pop that, that helmet apart, and you do get this. And I'm honestly kind of curious about this because this is a goofy-looking face. He's, like, smiling, and I'm not really sure what the intent is here for. It's one of those, like, oh, boy, here I go killing again. You know, he's, he's ready to go just massacre someone, and he's so happy about it. It's a good face. It's a good expression. You know, it's really good paint job. I'm not so sure that I, I know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I'm always down for options when it comes to something like that. And then, of course, we do get other weaponry. So the most mundane of which is going to be just a standard sword. It does have a sheath. Of course, you know, you've got the belt, so you can put it on there. Golden red on the handle, silver blade. Uh, we've seen this 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 sword what eight thousand times at this point. We get this monster here. So this is this is one of the the cooler accessories we've gotten in quite some time. This is the Leosier hammer. So of course it has his namesake all over it. Tons of detail, just tons of detail crammed in here. Nice paintwork. All these little rivets around it, jewels, baubles, whatever you want to call, it, do have a hit of paint. You've got that red jewel in the center on that crest. And it's just a cool idea. This is a really nice looking weapon. I will say, however, 
It is super, super heavy. Uh, this thing, I, I actually weighed this. It weighs one and a half ounces, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when the figure only weighs like six and a half ounces, it's a huge, huge uh, weight distribution challenge. So you are gonna have to play a balancing game with this thing. There is, there is probably no way around that, but it, it certainly looks cool. And then we get this, and I feel kind of stupid because when I reviewed the, the Xylernian Guard, I, I kind of ran in and raved over his shield as if I hadn't already known that these were coming. And, you know, it's just been so long, I obviously forgot that the shield system we got with the Xylernian Guard started with these two figures. So we get the Leosier shield, shield with Attila, and it is the same kind of situation. So you can pop these out from the back, and you can have, you know, this is that new shield plug. And they are kind of a tight fit, which is, of course, you know, very necessary. So you've got your base there, and then you've got your, like, a buckler almost here. And you can actually, I mean, you could use this as a shield if you wanted. Put the, uh, put the handle back on it, and you're, you're back in business. But you've got this thing. I absolutely love this idea. It's so modular, and it obviously opens up possibilities down the road for other shields. You know, obviously we're gonna get every single faction leader emblazoned on a crest. It's another instance of, however, this is heavy. The Xylernian Guard also has the same issue where you are gonna have to balance that and get it in the hand just right. But it arguably makes, makes these figures look so, so much cooler. I, I know that this is not everybody's cup of tea, but I think, I think the more shields like this for me, the better. I really, really like it. And then for Gorgo, uh, he doesn't have any extra heads, like I mentioned, because he is still a man of mystery under there. We get his classic axe, though. Uh, so he had kind of a unique color scheme to his weapons in that original Kickstarter. This is not exactly the same, because his axe did have a double blade on, on that first one. This one does not. It only comes with one. And I cannot get this side off. Like, it's supposed to pop off, but it does not want to come. It doesn't really matter. Uh, all of the other little pieces still come off. Maybe it's just on there super tight or it's glued this time, but either way, I mean, I really like this axe, but it is absolutely overshadowed by his other weapon because he comes with a new, well, he comes with the Aether Blade. So this has been one of the most expensive accessories in the entire line. It was not released with Gorgo in the first figure. It was part of the fourth weapons pack in that Kickstarter. I actually don't have that, so I can't compare it, but this is basically that sword made again. Aerithir also comes with it, but his is nowhere near as detailed. It's kind of weird that you would get the better version with Gorgo, uh, but it is his namesake, you know, in terms of sword. So I really like that. You've got, you know, like Aerithir's head on there, basically. You've got a little skull down there on the bottom, but the sword is just, I mean, it's cool. It looks evil, looks dark, looks menacing. It's great. So I really like that. And then he also gets one of these swords, uh, shields rather, and this is just ridiculous. It's so big and heavy that it actually needs a second plate. So this Aerithir head is connected to this red plate here, which then gives it a little bit more stability, makes it a little bit more rigid, and then it connects through uh, just like Attila's shield. They actually have the same base shield. So the piece underneath is the same uh, red sort of color underneath there with the silver trim, but this looks awesome. I love it. I love the idea that they've gone with here in terms of making these shields. And you know, can we just talk for a minute about the fact that Gorgo absolutely loves his boss so much that he's just like got him all over his stuff. It's really weird, but uh, this is rad. I just love this so much. I'm such a big fan of this idea. I've said it 50 times too many already, but yeah, these guys come with, I mean, just, just a great amount of stuff. They do, of course, come because you can't not have these, right? It's just, you gotta have them. They come with straps. I will say, though, that these don't come with back adapters. I'm a little bit upset about that. Uh, I need, everybody needs more, right? We all need more back adapters. Everybody needs some. Throw them in that box, but these are, uh, these are just an awesome array of accessories. I'm really happy with all this new unique stuff. The more themed accessories that I can get to these figures, the better. And this is a prime example of just how much detail the horseman can cram into something as small, you know, as a shield or a mace or a sword. So yeah, overall, I mean, there is no doubt in my mind that this is gonna be one of the top Mythic Legions releases for the year. There's just no way around it. Even with Cosmic on the horizon, this set of figures represents something really special for, for the line. Not to mention the fact that it's of course tied to the video game, but it's another instance of figures getting back out there that people don't have a way to get. Nobody wants to spend $300 on a Gorgo Aetherblade or whatever crazy price he goes for these days. Most people don't wanna do that. This was such a good idea to get these guys back out there, but change them up to make them look even better 
and include new parts. Not a ton of new parts, but enough new parts to make them seem entirely different from their first figures. Not to mention the fact the added paint detail, the new faces, the new helmets, and then of course all these wacky, crazy new accessories with all these new details. It's just a lot to take in. This is a really, really solid two-pack. And frankly, if you didn't get it, you will regret it. So that's going to do it for this look at the Mythic Legion's War of the Aetherblade 2-pack. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.